here. Shall we wait a few seconds? <coughs> a minute, a minute. Okay, let's go. Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Marco. Hi Marco. <laughs> Hi, I'm Marco. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm going to talk about uh, um, a different way to talk about smart cities because um, many um, many cities are publishing lots of data. I'm uh, part of Open Knowledge Foundation Italy, and I'm working with uh, lots of um, many Italian municipalities to work on open data. And we all love open data. It's great. It's a great way to, to get transparency from the community, get transparency from uh, almost anything. And open data are really cool because we got lots of data collections. The, the census says 281 uh, available at the moment. Lots of data sources, lots of, uh, an incredibly grow, growing uh, movement. And then more and more cities, regions, um, entities all over the world are giving out data. So we get uh, lots of geographic data sets, lots of geologic data sets, and public transportation is now uh, ever more interesting. Is it jumping somewhere? Oh. Earlier that was happening because the connection was loose somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Hey, so can you just say the top title in Italian. <laughs> 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 that oh, open data is so cool. Yeah. Oh quanto sono belli di open data. <laughs> in Italian. <laughs> 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 but there's a catch. <laughs> in specific, specifically, uh, th this is a, a photo of Central Park. And there's a catch, and I want to show you what the catch is about looking at parks. Well, because looking at the data catalogs from three cities, New York, Chicago, and Bologna, where uh, I come from, we see um, that there is something really strange going on. New York City parks have this level of detail, organization, status, type, and whatsoever. Chicago, uh, yeah. We can't even read it, the, the level of detail. Bologna, mm. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it's part of the game. I mean, everyone publishes the information he or she has. So New York has obviously a, a, a way to look at parks in a more management uh, uh, kind of way because it, it, it has information about jurisdiction, waterfront, uh, mapped, uh, map, uh, if it's mapped or not, the borough. Uh, the precinct and whatsoever. Uh, in Chicago, the, we can't read it, but there's a whole level of detail on the specific uh, um, uh, services available or areas or uh, a lot of detail. Yeah. So if we want to try to uh, uh, connect the dots uh, and see what kind of information uh, matches in the, w uh, in the w various views of, uh, of, the map, uh, of the park concept, we have to see that, for example, the, the, the precinct or the, the, um, the sign name are connected to the park name in Chicago and the, the nome in Bologna. And the, uh, the ID, the specific ID of the, day, uh, of the single row is uh, once is it, it's in gisprotnum, here it's another code, and here code underscore UG. It's terrible. So, so it's all about semantics. If we look at a data set and we don't understand the columns, we need to develop something around it to understand how uh, we can be able to manage it. We know how, what, how we could do that. Having an application for Chicago, we would uh, uh, take the data set, uh, work on that, know the column names, and write our code around those column names. It's easy, it's elaborate, but it's easy. But let's say we want to try to take a data set from New York. We would have to add a normalization process, for example, because the address, the, the, the written address is not exactly the same format. So we would have to um, really create a, a, a complete re-elaboration of the data. 
and it's again pretty easy, but not, uh, but quite elaborate. And uh, doing that once means that you have to do it for every data set you want to add to your system. Or we could start looking at all the, the whole problem at a higher level. It's all about dimensions. We have time, we have a space, and we have a topic of the data. Time, it's easy. We know time's a line, more or less. So it's pretty easy to manage. Space, we, we, we love space because else we wouldn't be here. What the real problem is, is the third part. It's the topic problem. Because there are so many topics that are covered by open data, and there are so many uh, uh, data sets available uh, all around the world that um, it's pretty, uh, quite impossible to understand exactly what a specific data set covers. Again, if we talk about parks, everyone has a different view on what parks are. Um, and that goes from parks to, to uh, um, um, recycle bins to, to mm, any kind of element. Uh, probably nobody in this room would, be, would agree on what a door is. So uh, it's all about ontologies. We, we have lots of ontologies explaining almost any kind of topic. Not every, but mo m many. We have the DMTF for specific uh, um, computer infrastructure uh, uh, ontologies. We have Inspire. We all love Inspire, more or less. Uh, we have Dublin Core, we have Friend of a Friend. Do we need more? We always need more ontologies because we always need more uh, uh, ways to describe the world in a, in a coherent fashion. What we see, what, what we see on the, uh, uh, behind the whole text is um, the, um, yeah, the linked open data graph, uh, the, the linked data graph specifically, which has lots of um, yeah, data providers and, and ontology definitions uh, that are interconnected. And uh, as such, the whole discussion of ontologies means basically it's like having foreign keys in our uh, relational databases. So if we can get the ontologies into the whole um, discussion on semantics, we can be basically uh, ready to do something way more interesting with our data than we could before. But in the end, this is all a discussion for developers and, and coders, what in the end is true is visualizing the data. And a, an end user doesn't like a, a table. It's terrible. Because th this, is not, th this is just data. This is not information. What a user wants is a map, and has always wanted a map. And because a map gives you the context for the information. And giving you the context for the information, these are all maps of Nottingham in various time periods. Um, giving you the context for the information enables you to understand the, the situation, to understand the, 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 where you are and what the services are around you. And it enables you to do one more thing, to elaborate on that. This is, th there are many ways to elaborate on information. There are, there's MDX for uh, business intelligence. There is Sparkle for the graph world. There is SQL to, for the, the relational world. And there is WFS for, to, to get the specific features. And this is great because basically what you can get is uh, mm, infographics. You, you get the possibility to do aggregations to do aggregations and get directly into uh, um, something like a city dashboard where you can uh, get more information than you could ever get from just having one element on a, one, one element in a table. And you can think about planning and, and only knowing every part of the city enables you to do that. So here comes the, 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 um, the whole vivacity project. The Vivacity project starts taking this information, these very simple uh, rows uh, uh, of CSV files, um, uh, takes the concept of, of um, an ontology. This is a very simple ontology for a park that I wanted just to show you 
the functionality uh, of vivacity. It says, yeah, it's unreadable. Okay, it says park, tree, spe species, because um, in Bologna we have um, specific details on the, the single trees available uh, present in every park. And then there is uh, services, fields, um, ball field, uh, basket field. Then there is uh, management of the park and phone number. Because we had this information almost available here without these. The, the problem with these CSV files is that there is no connection between the parts. So what happens? This happens. Um, Vivacity uses a, a, um, a graph database as, as a backend. So this, the information is connected in a, um, in a way that enables the user to re reconnect back using only the ontology as, a point, uh, as an entry point. For example, knowing this structure, we could uh, just ask the, the the database, if there are uh, what the number, what the telephone number is of the uh, of each of the parks, and show it, show it on the map because we know the geometry. From there, we get to here, we get to the borough. The borough is this, and we have the telephone number, which is connected to here. In this way, we just ask an, a, a, a question about our ontology, and we get the answer on this, on the specific city. This generates obviously a few problems because, yeah, it's not fun and games. And uh, the raw data, the ETL is complex, and um, we thought to we, we thought that having just an ETL uh, taking only CSV files and and um, Excel files and tables anywhere, or shape files, basically structured data with meta information is one part, but it needed something more because many cities are starting to publish APIs to get access to their information. So um, the raw data can be taken directly from APIs with this uh, meta information and description. The raw data collected is kept and is, is versioned so that we can see a given time, uh, a given moment in time what the situation was in a very specific moment. And uh, then there is semantics. The, the semantic part is um, basically uh, an interpretation of each column and um, based on, a, on the ontologies that are given. And every change in a single data set, we, do the, we control the meta information about the specific data set, uh, every change in a, that, uh, in a data set in it creates a new semantic model and the user is, has to intervene and change the, uh, the mappings. But basically, it's, it already, it, it, it enables just, I mean, it, it requires the user intervention just in this case. It's not just a front end, it's not just an uniforming tool. It's a way to understand and really help uh, uh, um, the, the understanding of the, of the data. In the end, it's a, it's a way to, for the city to become not just a producer of data and just someone who has the information and just gives it away, but it becomes an integrating part of, of the uh, city decision making and most importantly, the, the, the integration of, of, of data sets and APIs enables the city to really uh, understand what's going on. The stack, Vivacity 1.0 had to be presented last year in Beijing. Didn't make it. I mean, Beijing didn't make it. <laughs> Vivacity <laughs> did. But yeah, OK. Anyway, um, it was based on Open Layers 2, uh, Django, and Postgres. Postgres, it was just a prototype, very slow, incredibly slow. Because, yeah, putting a graph inside Postgres, don't do that. I mean, now the new version is our new versions are quite good, but yeah, last year wasn't that great. Now Vivacity two, we we changed to Leaflet, in, and maybe soon in uh, to, to Open Layer three, hopefully. Uh, again, Django as a data manager and exposes the APIs, and as I said, 
uh, I, I told uh, I spoke about MDX, Sparkle, SQL, and WFS. These are all uh, uh, supported by the backend. So Django interprets everything and manages to do the queries and transform the queries in the specific um, queries to the various backends. And now there are two backends, MongoDB for the, the document approach, let's say, from the bottom up, and Neo4j for the relational part, um, Neo4j spatial, to get the relationships between the resources in the in the in the map and yes it's it's open source it will be soon in November by end November at the moment it's uh, just I, I wanted to show you a demo but yeah the the the, um, the server farm where it is in Germany just said your motherboard is exploded okay <laughs> okay no problem I mean that's why we use server farms, right? <laughs> it's somewhere else, someone has to do it. I can't make the demo, sadly. But there is the version one on GitHub, and it's a prototype. It doesn't work at 100% as every prototype. Yeah, and that's it. That's it, yeah. You want Okay. Can I, I'll hand them up. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Hi. I'm Tamara Colby. I would like to um, see if you could go back to the slide that had all the data that uh, it looked like like newspaper graphics or something. It, yeah, the one that one. Yeah. Okay, so that one's sort of like an example. Yeah. Of how you can be a data integrator, and could you just talk a little bit about what those tables represent, and also how these are used in decision making for citizens and urban managers. I mean, uh, good question. Uh, this is just an example of what can be done. Basically, the, these are all uh, um, aggregations of the, of the information available. Um, the more information is put on the, uh, into the system, the, the better the uh, ontologies represent, the, uh, I mean, the better the semantics represents the whole system. And as such, you're able to define uh, specific aggregations. I don't know, did, has ever, uh, anyone used MDX and, and business intelligence tools? Okay. Um, basically, what you can do is that is you can you have imagine a, a cube of information. Only it has not only three dimensions. It has all the dimensions you need and you think you need. Um, as soon as you start uh, working with uh, lots of dimensions, you have to really understand how to get to that element you you really want to look at. And MDX does just this. It's like uh, SQL normal database query, only uh, it enables you to slice this cube and take only the, the parts that you really want to work on and then aggregate at the end uh, with only a selection of elements. For example, you could say one dimension is, uh, let's say, it's unreadable here and it's unreadable here, great. Um, <laughs> let's say Mm, uh, let's make an example. Uh, usage of buses. You you know where the transport, uh, where the bus stations are. You know where the, the um, how the buses, the bu the lines work. You know um, if you get to the level that you know every user uh, when a given user uses a bus, you can be able to start uh, aggregating on that level of of, uh, of detail. Uh, for example, saying how many users use that specific bus stop, and um, as uh, as soon as you do that, you are able to uh, create a model for a specific uh, for the bus stops, and um, this model enables you to then understand how many bus stops you really need, and this is ca this can all be, uh, oh. <laughs> This can all be done through this uh, MDX uh, queries. Maybe they're complex, maybe sometimes they're slow, not always that fast, but um, it's part of the, the, the whole idea is that usually MDX, 
uses um, specific databases to, to work. And uh, applying this, the, the MDX model, to a graph database is a, a completely new, new approach. So there's just a, a very small literature on that yet because it's a very new line of, of uh, experiments. The risk was, uh, ended up with uh, one ontology for every data set because basically in the human sciences, whatever, it's <coughs> so vague a term that there is no a, a, a defined set of ontologies. So you no ended up with having one ontology for every data set or for every organization to get the data from. Is it something, no. I mean, have you experienced it? And I understand it's just mm -hmm. version one, but how many data sets you already have? And you accept to experience in uh, this? Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are. The, the problem of the data set is that, in fact, there is no real consensus of what is a good, uh, the, the problem with ontology, sorry, is that there is no real consensus that this ontology is good enough for solving this problem and everyone uses that ontology. And um, what we did uh, was using the most used ontologies and trying to work on them, to work just with them. Um, as soon as someone gave us data um, with, uh, th that didn't respect that ontology, um, there was a, a two-sided work. On one side, we evaluated the specific data set if it was sensed to uh, uh, elaborate it and try to bring it towards that ontology. In other cases, it didn't make any sense. So it was basically an extension. And uh, the whole thing is that the, the, the system itself contains, a par in part, extensions to these, um, the, to the basic ontologies given by the classic, I mean, the standard ontologies, and there is a small extension given, created by us, just to map the, the, the additional information. And, the, and sometimes, um, some of the information is just mapped between the the the, the, the ontologies. Just to give you an idea, how many data sets do you have? How big they are? Um, we have the at the moment. It's a good question. We have <coughs> around thirty. Uh, the, we have the, the data sets of Bologna uh, in, in, in installed. That's uh, that, that are, are around. 50, 60 data sets. Oh, from the municipality or from other? A municipality and a few um, uh, co um, entities around the municipality. Oh, um, transports. Oh, all companies, uh, all entities starting to push uh, open data. Mm -hmm. okay. In, yeah, Bologna area and, and we're starting to uh, confront with other data sets and, and uh, the, most importantly the uh, CCAN and Socrata data collectors that, that have a really nice API to get directly to the metadata and possibly uh, starting to um, import their data sets soon, meaning New York, uh, Baltimore, uh, Ann Arbor, and anywhere. That would be a, a nice, an interesting experiment because then we, we will have really to see what kind of uh, problems, uh, I mean, we How think we solved. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. We found that we, we, with the data we were working on, we had some problems, but we were able to solve them pretty fast. Yeah. Can I just grab that? Ah, thank you. Sorry, just before the next question, we've got about five minutes left before the next presentation is due to start. Um, there's due to be a presentation after this one. I've been told that we'll first sort of stick to the program because the one after this are cancelled, we're going to have the gap and then come back for yours, Chris, after. So I'll just give everyone a, a bit of a heads up about that. Um, but we can carry on with the questions in the meantime. So, sorry, who got questions? So, um, I guess my question is, so you have Bologna, so mm -hmm. you have a starting, um, you 
have some ontology specifically for Bologna. When you add New York, there's going to be additional data elements. Mm -hmm. um, some data elements are going to have to be transformed. You may have some data yeah. per capita, and you have to transform it to a population, something like that. Yeah. Um, so that's part of the work you do. Every time you add a new data set, there's going to be some semantic mapping that you have to do. Yeah. You're going to have to perhaps extend the data model. I mean, this is structured data. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about yeah. unstructured data. Right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, there's no magic bullet there. I mean, this is work you have to do, right? Yeah. But the idea is that you're going to come up with an ontology. Over time, you're going to come up with an ontology that will be able to include Bologna, Beijing, New York, what have you. Yeah, exactly. There is one additional aspect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There, yes, exactly. But there is one additional aspect. The, the, transform, uh, the transformation part of the, the data from uh, the specific uh, format to the ontology-liked format, it, uh, the idea is to have that um, easily uh, creatable by anyone, I mean, meaning um, to have a small uh, uh, f flow uh, editor that enables you to just do the basic operations. Um, in fact, that part is st still under heavy development because we're evaluating even the, the, the possibility to uh, work with um, Google Refine and Open Refine that have a great, great tool to elaborate the, the yeah, the, the, the transformation of information and and the, the, the data sets because a, and having that would help us a lot because um, Google Refine enables you to export the, the, the transformations you, you make. Who knows you Google Refine? Okay, it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing tool. Now it's Open Refine. It's, um, it enables you to uh, uh, basically elaborate CSV files and, and Excel files and anything and clean up your data. For example, you suppose you have um, data collected by someone in over an enormous amount of time and uh, a given road has the, uh, one name but it's spelled wrong in uh, many, many times. So this uh, um, Open Refine just takes the, 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 the deck column and says, hey, maybe you, you, you meant the same road. And you just can uh, clean up everything just before you, you put it into a, a more complex system to, to enable evaluations. So we're, talk we're thinking about integrating that into the system, into the platform, so that really um, it's, it's an easy experience to clean up the data, prepare the transformation, and prepare the mapping, and then uh, have everything already running. Yeah, don't you have to do the same thing with spatial data? I mean, using a tool like FME, just, you know, basically a set of rules that transform data into something else. Yes, we do. We do, and that's part, uh, that, that's part of the game. I mean, there is already, uh, we have been looking at the open, uh, open Refine because there is a tool already, an extension for Open Refine that enables you to already do at least part of that. But, yeah, that is one of the the issues, and I didn't even talk about the problem that Bologna has, living in Italy, uh, Bologna and the city beside Bologna have a different uh, uh, um, projections uh, in data sets, so, yeah. That's, yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, yeah, we have a, 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 a sad story, but. <laughs> There is, we're coming up to when the next set of sessions are due to start. Now, we don't have one in here. If anyone's wanting to go to a, a different talk, there's a few different ones on. Alternatively, Mark, do you want to ask some more questions or do you want to have a break? No, no problem. You're okay. Do people want to ask a few more questions and things or hear the story? <laughs> Entirely up to yourselves. Okay. Go back over to you then if you're right. <laughs> Jump some water. <laughs> you're right. Okay. okay. No, basically, the, the, um, the problem with the projections in, um, in Italy is that we had, uh, up until last year, when the European, um, the, the, there was, uh, the European standard was set with e, ED50, um, ev almost every region had a specific um, yeah, projection. 
and sometimes even a, a modified version of classic projection that, that make, made everything worse for people who were working on, on the data because there are some regions that are overlapping into um, other, um, time, not time zones, um, <coughs> meridians. So uh, basically the, the government chose to get uh, part of Italy down to Africa as measures so that everything would be on the same side. Now you mentioned uh, OGC standards mm -hmm. on one of the slides. Yeah. Um, so for spatial representation, does that mean that you're using GML as the way of this, your standard way of representing spatial data? Um, standard with, yes. Standard way, yes, because that's what more or less uh, uh, WFS uh, supports. Yeah, WFS. yeah. So the next question is, you're talking about a whole city. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's something called city GML, yeah. which is designed. To, you know, it doesn't do very well inside buildings, but outside buildings, and it's been extended to include utilities and so on. Yeah. Is that sort of the longer term model that you'd like to fit into? Yeah, yeah. That's the yeah. We have a, a project working. Oh, sorry. No, no. It, it, it just we have a, a discussion going on with the mm, people working already on city GML and uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. It's long term, but mid to long term. But yeah, that's part of the of the plan. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Do you want the Uh, well, it's part of the, 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 I mean, it's part of the blocks, yes. yeah, scale. No, it's part, if you have the same source of data, mm -hmm. and then you want the same uh, target mm -hmm. uh, schema, mm -hmm. you can do this mapping in HAIL, it's completely mm. open source and so on, yeah. and then load and the, export the mapping and uh, uh, do the transformation for the data server side, so yeah. every time you have uh, this kind of data you can transform directly. Yeah, yeah the, the, the idea is exactly that. I mean, uh, you do the mapping. I, I, as I said, the, once the semantic is given for a given data set, yeah, exactly. that is kept, yeah. and you don't even have to tell the, the system you, he has to yeah, go and get it. The idea is to have it automatically at least once every... Say we have a data set that gets uh, updated every week. Once every week you get the data set into the system and it's uh, up and, and, and working, possibly, hopefully. Would this be, uh, let's, let me say, only a container of the data? Or, or do you think that it would be also possible to integrate some uh, uh, management uh, models or something like that? Um, at the moment, it's just a container with APIs. Uh -huh. But the idea is to be able to develop plugins to have the APIs, I mean, already in the, in the system to be easier to access and faster possibly, possibly. Uh, yeah, but the idea is, again, plan. This is not la long term, but mid term, but ten, tendently even short term. But yeah, it's part of the game. another use case scenario um, maybe using something like um, water for um, the, the, the aggregation water or you know just another another urban metric that people need to look at for example in this moment we have in Italy um, the uh, um, I mean, it's part of the um, 2020 uh, thing to have broadband in cities. So um, we're developing a, a model to see the, how much a city is valuable for a telecommunication company. And to do that, we need to know lots of information, basically. Um, amount of, of people in a given area. 
amount of the infrastructure is already uh, available uh, uh, under under the streets. Amount of of um, Mm, uh, the the kind of people, meaning the, the income, the mean income of a given area. These are all factors to be uh, considered in, a, in, in this evaluation. And at the end, we can give uh, a specific value to uh, different zones. And through this system, uh, basically, the, um, we're, it's a project that's uh, just starting because, yeah, Europe. <laughs> things are not, not always that fa as fast as, they, as we would love them to be, but um, the, whole, uh, the whole project is just, uh, yeah, just starting, but we were able to define two or three areas that big um, tele the telecommunication companies could be interested in uh, investing in fiber optics and installing um, yeah, their, their infrastructures. And two of these areas will be starting in a few months. So, yeah, it's, it's a model we are using. The, it's the, 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 whole, um, the whole aggregation on open data uh, part is something we are, we are using and it's, it's useful, it's useful. It's only, sometimes it's difficult to, f to find, to really see the, 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 the connection of information. And that's in part why we wanted to do this project. Because uh, as soon as you see how information is connected between the uh, how the dots are connected in the in, in the city, then the aggregation is simply deciding where to um, go and cut to see how the cake is made. And as soon as you see that, then the the, the aggregations are immediate, because you see the the the, the structure, you see the stratification of the. Uh, city, the services, the uh, infrastructures, and you can see, suddenly you can even see where a city is tendentially going to uh, grow, because you see the infrastructures, the, the transports, the, 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 um, the quality of living in that area, the, the, the services present, um, kindergartens, uh, and whatsoever, and service schools, uh, and you really understand how the the the, um, the urban fabric is is created, and as soon as soon as you get that, the the, the aggregations are part of the uh, of the game. And the good thing is that having a standard tool, a standard language for uh, these kind of aggregations, uh, you basically can use a, a graphic tool to just play with them, and it just creates new tables. Then, then the, the, the problem is really understanding that, that those tables with those numbers. But it's, uh, it's something really interesting because, yeah, it enables you to really have a playground to, to, to work with. It's like SimCity only with real data. I just add that it allows you to compare cities in the sense that you can compare the quality of the bus system in yeah. Bologna to the quality of the bus system. Milano, Obviously, and you can say it's much better in Bologna and it's much cheaper in Bologna. What's going on in Milano? Right? Yeah, that, that's part. Uh, that, that's uh, yeah. Uh, having all the information connected enables you yeah to do metrics. Mm -hmm. and, sorry. No, it's, it's an interesting point because your example is around parks. Um, I, I work at Birmingham UK City Council, and I seem to spend days just trying to discuss with our parks team what's a park, what's a recreation ground, what's an open space. Yes. This is just within one city municipality, in effect. Sort of yeah. thing. So, in order to do that kind of international comparison, the, these ontologies and, and the, the description is going to be really, really important to allow that kind of comparison. I think. I mean, infrastructure, I, I suspect, is a little bit easier. Yeah. I don't know, right? Because I don't it's work easy. in that sector. But um, use of space—that's that's a really difficult thing to compare. Not that yeah. it shouldn't be tried, though. So I don't know, uh, like your, your parks example there that was mocked up. Comparing even Chicago to New York, I, I should imagine, judging by not just the, the attributes that were available, sort of saying which ones have got mini golf or whatever, which would be an interesting yeah, worldwide comparison, the best mini golf courses. <laughs> but the, yeah, you know, that alone is getting into the fine detail. Yeah. It, it's, it's, uh, I think it, th that's one of the, 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 the factors we wanted to explore because that's yeah 
I mean, it, it had a very practical uh, um, reason that was the, the one I was talking about, the, the fact we wanted to evaluate the value of a city for the, the, the telecommunication. But in fact, it's just well, a metric. You did a market survey? I mean, when you say the value no. of the city for the telecom, I mean, and you look, were you doing, you looked at demographics, were you doing like a market research or a co whole composite assessment? And you say, oh, well, here's where we see strong demand. Here's where we see an underserved area. I mean, it's, I, I, it's, um, so look, you understand the drivers for your model. The answer, uh, the answer is quite strange, so I'm just putting my hands in forward. Um, I believe in Dr. House. He says the, the, um, the patient always lies. <laughs> the patient lies, but data doesn't. The, the, the data doesn't. Uh, and it's, uh, data is numbers, and numbers don't lie, at least, hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can manipulate them, but yeah, that, 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 then then we're talking about black magic. Uh, <laughs> data don't lie. That they they they're get they're there. They're numbers, and being able to create a model only on numbers without getting to uh, um, evaluate the, the the specifics of having people calling you. Would you like the, to to have broadband whatsoever? has um, given us the, the, the opportunity to really thinking about what, the, yeah, changing the, that approach because again, yeah, people lie. And on the phone, they don't even have to give it to Once chance. everybody you know, agrees on the basic data, then you can have a rational conversation about yeah. what to do. One thing you, I, you may be aware of is something called urban observatory. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the first thing I ever saw from Urban Observatory, it's totally graphical from what I saw, totally yeah. graphical, was they compared parks in Paris to parks in New York or Chicago or London, and it was just incredible how yeah. much parkland there is in Paris compared to how much parkland there isn't in Chicago. Yeah. And it's graphical, you know, all they've really done is they made sure that the Area covered is the same, so you're comparing apples to apples and not apples yeah. to orange. But I mean, it's the kind of it's exactly yeah, the kind it's of thing you're doing, except they're doing it totally graphically. No. Yeah, the, the the idea is to be able to do that. I mean, the whole platform has has the the the, um, the scope to to be able to do that numerically if you need it. So, for example, b having an endpoint for Excel to make uh, MDX queries and possibly graphically, because you could define a, 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 a query on the, 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 beside the map, meaning in a side, bar, a side panel. You'd write your MDX query, run it, and the data shows up on the map. So that, maybe not like that, because that re requires normalization of areas, and yeah, maybe it's, that, that is pro probably easier to do numerically. But yeah, the idea is exactly this, to be able to see what, happ what, what happens. I mean, th th this slide deck is slightly different from the one I had before, because the one I had before for version one um, was deeply uh, SimCity based. Because what's, uh, what's open data, uh, mm, mm, if not uh, the, the, the engine of SimCity? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, we've been, um, I've been working with the, 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 the municipality where I live in. It's, it's a very small town, 15,000 people. So, um, and we've been, uh, um, I mean, the, 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 um, the council, the city council, really was amazed when they saw me playing at a, waiting for a, a, a meeting, um, uh, playing SimCity on my laptop. They said, what's that? It's really cool. And we started thinking of, it, 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 that's the moment when I started thinking of, hey, SimCity, you, uh, how, why, why didn't you ever play it? I mean, you're, you're managing a city. If you can't manage a, a simulated city, how can you manage a, a, a real city? I mean, there are more, more problems there, for sure. There is more complexity. But the, the model below is basically the same, and the new version of SimCity is even more like that. It's a more uh, uh, um, a network, uh, specifically 
a network of networks. And that's what cities are. And that's why, yeah, the whole thing started. Questions or yeah, comments? I just add one thing, and that is, once you've got the data, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, using a SimCity game playing model mm -hmm. is a really good approach because it's something that a politician, non technical people can do. You know, yeah. you don't have to be an engineer to do yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, that, that's one one thing we we, we did with uh, with uh, some of the members of the uh, of the city council, and they they played, and it was great. They had fun, and they saw that they couldn't manage, uh, they couldn't always manage the, the simulated city, but it was really fun. It was really great, and yeah, and. It's interesting, actually, from the same city point of view, that the talk that we're supposed to be on now by um, yeah, Smart city. and Rob Hawks, I don't know if you've come across the Vizzy Cities. Uh, it's, called, it's called Vizzy Cities, V-I-Z-I -I, Cities, all one word. Um, they were both, well, certainly I know Rob Hawks was a former developer at Mozilla, and uh, they, they, they're taking the likes of OpenStreetMap data purely for, for London, I think, yeah. at the moment, yeah. and uh, OS Open data. They've made... 3D visualizations that work in the browser. But I think they they were inspired by SimCity mm -hmm. from, yeah, from yeah, what yeah, I yeah. understand, and as well as making it effectively creating this SimCity game with London as the the SimCity in effect. So um, it's it's well worth going away and checking yeah. what they're doing. I, it's I think it's great. still in beta, isn't yeah, it? It's in beta. Yeah, it's still in beta. Yeah, it's in beta. I'm following some of their Twitter accounts at the moment. Rob Horse has put some images on. They're just trying to deal with the Z height data of like. <laughs> In London, you've got um, uh, roundabouts that are underground and stuff like that. Sort of thing. So they're trying to deal with underground roundabouts combined with flyovers, combined with various parts of the infrastructure, yeah. let alone the Thames running around. And, the, and the, the, on the website, there is an amazing video of, of the, um, the, the underground map, and really great. It's, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing because it's a 3D visualization of the whole uh, um, underground network, and wow with real-time data on where the, the, the underground is in a given moment. It's, it's really great. Cool. But the, sorry, I'm just taking <laughs> over there. My mind's racing. Um, the, the thing that I find interesting from, the, again, the city council type point of view is uh, in Birmingham, we, we, um, we cast, uh, broadcast on the internet the planning committee. Uh, so you've got these people untrained elected members who are looking at 2D plans on perhaps either on a Google map or our own internal maps and asking the kind of questions that the sort of the 3D visualization and, and the no. playing of the city would answer a lot of the times, how much the light comes in to affect things, stuff that you would normally model, but they actually just want something they can almost instantly just turn and play with and then they can make a more informed choice about the yeah. actual the planning decisions then alone. Yeah, and particularly start throwing demographic data, that sort of thing, on yeah. top of the actual physical infrastructure and the physical effect of something going in. So, uh, I was hoping to meet the guys from Visit Cities, but know, yeah. No. Yeah, the, the guys <laughs> from Visit Cities are great. They have a, yeah. they're, they're superstar web developers, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Have you got any more comments, questions, or should we give Marco a break? Because we've got 10 minutes before the next session <laughs> to start, or we can have a. Okay. Well, I, I just want to say that, like, you know, one of the biggest problems with urban planning is in, let's just say, like you say, land use and planning committee decision making is it's a long, elaborate process because you have to integrate all yeah. this information, yeah. you know, like the infrastructure and then the economics and the, the architecture and okay, yeah. and then you take every public comment that you're supposed to get and then you respond to every public comment you get. <laughs> And you know, after yeah, it feels like home, yeah. seven months, you know, maybe you're, you're, you're yeah, just no, about ready to get your permit to build. Let's say you were going to build a, a big apartment, yeah. nice Building. new thing yeah. that's maybe yeah. ten percent affordable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 It just takes so long. And so what you're saying is this will provide a more integrated, immediate, yes. integrated data and yes. networks of data. You yeah. know, showing all the ways that yeah. something is integrated into yeah. space and how yeah. people make better decisions. And yeah. uh, it's, it's a better way to argue the pros and the cons of a certain decision. 
Yeah, it's part of being informed. I mean, being informed is not just having that piece of paper. It's knowing all what's all that's around the decision you have to make. I don't know the implications. Call it. Can I give you a rest? Well, okay. Thank you.